Louis Davenport began his journey into Spokane at the age of 20. Hailing from Nebraska, Louis moved to Spokane to work at a restaurant owned by his uncle called The Pride of Spokane. Tragedy struck when this restaurant burned in August of 1889. Undaunted, Louis started his own restaurant called Davenport's Restaurant just three days following the fire with just two tents and some salvaged furniture. Davenport's restaurant soon became the most renowned establishment in the entire Northwest. With this incredible success, Lewis endeavored to expand his operation, and the Davenport Hotel was born. The historic Davenport Hotel first opened its doors in August of 1914. With its palatial Spanish Renaissance architecture, it became a literal jewel in the nation. The hotel became a beacon in the Northwest, drawing the rich and famous from all over into its doors. Being the first hotel in America to feature air conditioning, central vacuum system, housekeeping carts, accordion ballroom doors, and was the very first hotel to deliver ice water to each guest for free through specially designed faucets, truly reinventing the hotel experience for the entire world. Louis Davenport retired and sold his establishment in 1945, but he and his wife maintained a residence there until his passing on the 11th floor of the hotel in 1951. The hotel changed hands several times in the following years and finally closed in 1985. This beautiful landmark nearly faced a horrific fate when there was a movement to demolish this historic site, but local entrepreneurs Walt and Karen Worthy purchased the entire city block in 2000 and spent two years and $38 million to return the Davenport Hotel to its former glory. In the summer of 2002, the hotel once again opened her doors to the world. Now, with any location with such iconic history and its fair share of tragedies, the hotel is known for its paranormal activity and sightings. One of these is Ellen McNamara, who passed in 1920 while walking along a rooftop walkway and fell through the skylights onto the lobby floor some 30 feet below. There continue to be sightings of her still walking along the mezzanine in that same lobby. 
Louis Davenport himself is believed to still inhabit his namesake hotel. His former living quarters on the 11th floor is widely regarded as one of the most active locations in the hotel. Another is the curious circus room which Lewis allegedly designed for his friend, Harper Joy, who was a local businessman who had a passion for the circus and himself performed as a clown from time to time with the Ringling Brothers Circus. The numerous claims that have come out of the Davenport Hotel suggests that the Davenport is an incredibly active location for ghostly activity. Both the history and claims of this iconic location are what brought my good friend Charles Howard Johnson and I to the historic Davenport Hotel. We wanted to see if we could meet some of these former residents firsthand. And I'm here to tell you, the Davenport Hotel did not disappoint. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am now in the room. This is the circus room in the historic Davenport Hotel. As you can see, there's a lot of circus stuff in here. Look at those lights. <laughs> this is a notoriously active room for spiritual activity, uh, as the stories go that uh, this hotel in general, especially the 11th floor and this room particularly, um, are known to have a lot of uh, paranormal activity. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here and I am joined by my good friend and uh, investigating partner, Mr. Charles Hello Howard there. Johnson. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well. And Charles actually wrangled all this for us. So this is our adventure tonight. We're here in the, in the historic Davenport Hotel in Spokane, Washington. And we're gonna be checking this stuff out. So uh, awesome place. It is beautiful. And we're going to look, go on a tour of the lobby and stuff. You guys won't believe how beautiful this building is. It's just incredible, but just the love and care that went into this room. But this is apparently one of the favorite rooms of the builder, um, Mr. Davenport, who actually started the whole hotel as a waffle stand and then went on to build this beautiful uh, little jewel, well, big jewel box of a hotel. And it's just beautiful, just stunning. And this place was almost demolished. It was almost wrecked. But apparently a group came in at the last moment at the 11th hour, saved it from destruction. So thank God they did. But look at those headboards. Are you serious? That belongs in a palace. But that's where we are. So stick around. We're going to get deeper into the Davenport Hotel and talk about some of the haunting stuff and Charles and I are going to do some crazy investigating. Hopefully we'll get some uh, some uh, activity on camera to show you guys but I'll tell you what we did dowsing rods just a couple minutes ago and uh, Charles you want to? It was crazy. We, <laughs> we had two sets and they were both uh, going in sync together. It, it was, was really cool. And the cold energy too. Yeah the tingly energy we both felt um, and one of the rods, my rod that I was holding in my left hand and the rod he was holding in his right hand was in sync. They just moved exactly in sync over and then back. And, and while that was happening, he and I both were experiencing incredible chills. So we felt a lot of energy. We did an EVP session on a, on a, cassette, a little recorder and we do think that we're hearing what might be a child's voice, but I'll get into that when I get back to the studio and can really break it down and have a listen. But I hope you guys are ready because uh, it's going to be a wild night. It's going to get spooky. <laughs> Those two voices. That's peculiar. Yep. That was different. So that's when we start to pick out the anomalies. Who are, who are we speaking to? So that one voice came through like, wait, you know, like wait. Yeah. So it was like, wait. Let's say pray. Yeah, then I heard almost fuck. Oh, really? Okay. 
after that. Witches. Yep. That's a full word. Now we, sh we shouldn't be hearing full words according to the enemies. Are there any spirits here with us tonight? Carla. 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 Yeah. Is your name Carla? Mama. Mama. <laughs> Is there anything you would want us to know? Get on with it. Awesome. That was awesome. That was several words. Yeah. Father? See so your father? Yep, I heard that. Okay. Father? Father? How many are here with us? Seven. Seven, maybe? That was a weird voice. Let's play a game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some numbers. You say the next number. One, two, three. Kinda sound like that. See, now that was different. You can do it. One, one, two. One. Did you hear one? Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. That was brilliant. That came through crystal clear. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Nice to hear from you. Thank you for communicating. That, that gave me chills. Oh, yeah, that was definitely good. Now say the next number. One, two. Okay, I gave you one number. That's it. <laughs> Can you say another number? Say two. Oh, the ball moved. The ball splashed on its own. It's flashing again. Good job. Did you just move the ball? Who's the gentleman that's with us tonight? Good luck. Good luck. Say good luck? Yeah. That was a full two words. This is your opportunity to talk to us. <laughs> now see, that, that's not a normal noise in the database you've been listening to it for a while that's crazy you're right i know you're not here to entertain us but we do require some evidence to know we're talking with you and that you, that you understand us But that one had a presence and it had more ambience. See, that was a kid sound, right? That sound, sounded like one. Again, one. <laughs> See, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Can you identify yourself? That's one. Okay. 
dog. That was clear. Uh -huh. It's very clear. That was an unusual one. God bless. God bless. I heard that loud and clear. God bless you as well. Are you with God? Run. Run. Oh, that was a little child voice again. Did you hear that? Did you hear that one? Yeah, the lady before that said either stab or stab. I thought. God bless. God bless. Another voice saying God bless. God bless you. See, that was two voices. Right. That shouldn't be happening. What was that? I didn't hear it. Mr. Davenport, are you here with us right now? Dang it. Is it dagger or dang it or something? What room are we in right now? What is it called? The room we're in. Get on with it. Get on with it? Yeah. This room has a specific name. What is the name of this room? <laughs> That's that? almost like a boo. Yeah, or a bark. Herp. Hello. Does it help? I don't know. That's the... Mr. Davenport, are you here with us right now? That's unusual. Yeah. That's the first time that sounds happening. Who's with us right now? Mama. My name is Brent and this is Charles. Who are we joined by? This is your time to talk or to light up the ball or light up the flashlights. Light up all these different equipment we have out here to show us things. I was something. I was that was a lot of words. Yeah. It's only supposed to be fractions of words. There's two flashlights. Are you capable of turning on one or both of them? Don't scoff at me. It's a fair request. Probably. <laughs> Can you tell us your name? That's one. That's something. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So I'm going to end the last session. This is just a little example of the session. Very fascinating. We've got some great responses. So thank you. That's all. <laughs> That's all. That's all. <laughs> what the wow, hell? that was creepy. That's really creepy. <laughs> that shouldn't have come up, dude. Well, it doesn't sound happy, that's for sure. I think it just breaks my heart to think that there may be people that are stuck in that state. You know, like there's a consciousness that is stuck in that torment. That just breaks my heart. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we think, too. Yeah. 
Well, that was different. Again, same thing. That was cool. What does it say? Yeah. Do you recognize what it says? I'm coming. I'm coming? What? Please. See, the interesting thing of those last two was it was dry. There wasn't uh -huh. even there wasn't even reverb on it. That's right. not right. Uh -huh. Unless I'm losing that battery. You see that light is flickering on the uh -huh. on the reverb now? Uh -huh. What does that sound? Uh -huh. Are you messing with my equipment? Uh -huh. Yeah, the reverb's dead. That's crazy. Right? Uh -huh. Now it's back. It's back. Weird. Right? Something's messing with the equipment, brother. Yeah, that's not the equipment we want you to mess with. Just the ball over here is fine. Don't knock out the reverb. Either the battery has been drained now, or it's screwed with it. Can you turn on the reverb again, please? That's the red box. Yeah, it just flashed on for a second. Can you do it again and make it stay on? I need you to leave that alone because you hear it clicking? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it's clicking. If you if you mess with that, we can't communicate with you. So please turn it back on. It's flashing. It's flashing in real time, dude. As I'm saying these things. That's weird. Yep. Again. And it's clicking. You can hear it. Clicking. Yeah, I hear the clicking. That's There's another one. For activity from that ball right now or the flashlights if you spin the flashlights just a little bit they should flick on that'll help us to know you're here too I do believe you're here but it helps to show that we're having communication if you can do those things to help show that we are talking God bless you. Thank you. All right, come on now. You can do it. I know you can make that ball move or those flashlights. That would be an amazing example to show you're hearing my voice. One of those two options. Do you hear that old time music yeah. back in there? Yeah. That was definitely music. Yep. One, two, three. Did oh, you hear that? Oh, oh. You heard that, right? That was awesome. Yeah. On demand. That's really wonderful. Thank you for that. That was incredible. Thank you for that. Get on with it. We're getting on with it. That's an unusual sound. It could be, that could be in the database somewhere, but it's, it's supposed to be fragments of words, not complete words. So the fact that it's come up several times now is unusual. If you're near that device with the green light on, it should flash and show me that you're close. Again, it won't hurt you 
it will not hurt you. It will just indicate to us that you're close because we don't seem to be able to see you. <laughs> Doubles. Yes, I don't know what that was. Oh, that was a little one. Yeah. I guess we're going to wrap up this session for now. Those of you that are here with us or you that's here with us, I don't, I don't know. But we're going to close this part off now. You have one last chance. Make the ball flash. Make the lights turn on. I'm going to count to, to ten. If you don't, if you don't make something flash by the count of ten, we're going to shut this session down, and maybe we'll come back to it later. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, if you want us to continue, make something flash. Eight, nine, ten. Okay. Okay, we're done. All right, thank you. Well, it's 12.09 a.m. Charles and I are sitting down here in the lobby of the beautiful Davenport Hotel in Spokane, and we thought we'd try to communicate with whomever's here. I don't know. I don't know who's here. We've had some pretty incredible stuff happening so far. We've documented some pretty cool activity um, for our first foray out as a team. This is really incredible. So we're going to dive into this a little more right now. See if someone's hanging out here in the lobby area. And this is a, a beautiful lobby as you can see. It's just ornate and amazing. This is the Darius Charles. How you doing, Charles? Hey. Hey, everybody. <laughs> All right. So Charles and I are going to sit here and see if we can get in touch with some of the eternal residents of the Davenport Hotel. Let's see what we find. Okay. Here we go. If there are any spirits here, we're trying to communicate with anybody that would like to, especially Louis Davenport. With the lady in white. Right. Or any yes. spirit so, that happens to be here. I'm going to turn on the ovens. Do you have any words for us today? Can you light up the K2? Yes. News. What does it say? News. News. Found. found news. News found. Yeah. Mr. Davenport. Can you turn on the flashlight for us, if you're here? Ellen, are you here with us today, or tonight? Can you give us the indication by turning on the flashlight, or making the K2s light up, or speaking through the box? Ellen, we heard a disturbing story today about your passing. The most common story is that you were walking above on the mezzanine and fell through the skylights to your death. There is a story that perhaps you were pushed. Is that true? Is there truth to that? Can you light up the flashlight for us? We just would like to hear some some response because of course if your life was cut short by the actions of another that's a horrible tragedy and the world should know if that is indeed your story please turn on that flashlight by just rotating the front of it just a little it could give us some credibility to that claim I understand why your spirit could be stuck here, having faced such a tragedy. Of course, your life being cut short by any means is tragic, and we're certainly sorry. But if it was be by being pushed, then we should know. 
see the little jumps on the K2 on mine, not on yours though. That's very isolated then, right? Yep. Because they're both in the very same proximity. Can you make that light up more? Can you make more lights light up by getting closer to it or using more energy? Yeah, three went up to the yellow. Okay. If that is true that you were pushed, please light up all the way across if you're capable of that. Just little jumps. If you can make that jump all the way across to the red, that could validate your story and help people understand what happened to you. All the way to the yellow again, that's good. Alan, are you here with us right now? Can you turn on the flashlight and let us know? So there, there was a famous poet here. His last name was Lindsay. And I, we, we think that when you left here, you committed suicide by drinking cleaning solution. Michelle Lindsay, are you here with us right now? Can you let us know? Mr. Davenport, are you here with us right now? Can you give us a sign that you can hear us? Are there any spirits around us right now that would like to communicate? If there's a spirit here with us, can you make... Several of those lights light up on the K2 meter in front of us. Move it or interact with the, the voice ovulus box that will create words. It's believed if you use your energy, you can create words in this box. But just by getting near this could be causing those lights to fluctuate. Couple words right off the bat, though. Yeah, found and news. That's kind of interesting. Right. The correlation is that both times this has been turned on, boom, it spit out a word, but then nothing after that. Right. That's very curious. I wonder why. Our first attempt with the flashlight and Ovilus device yielded very few results. Outside of some anomalous K2 readings, the first location in the lobby was less than conclusive. Given the size and scale of this lobby area, Charles and I decided to investigate some of the other areas in the lobby to see if we could have better results. We're going over to the other setting. We can find a location somewhere around here. Look at this. What's it say? Band witch. Alone. Alone. Aw. It's talking all kinds now. Yeah. Where did she apparently fall through here? Do we know? Um, it sounds like it was kind of dead center, right? Yeah, that, that's the way I've always heard it was on the floor in the yeah. dining area. Is that over here? Okay. So I don't know if there was a dining area over there in this section or not. Yeah, I mean, we don't know the we layout. Right there. Right. We're talking about Ellen McNamara, who is known as the lady in white who fell through the skylight to her death. What year was that, do you remember? 1920. 1920, so so long ago. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we just go back over here again, but just yeah. a different different table. table. Yeah, try a different one. Maybe there's one with the wing back chairs. <laughs> is it, it's yeah. all? What? Fresh. what? said Pam murder fresh bean. Wow. That's a lot to say. It's talking all kinds when you're walking around, huh? Yeah, that's, I've noticed that. That's amazing. Okay. Well, we're going to sit in these really elegant wingback chairs because, well, why not? Absolutely. What I'm seeing here, let's see. Yeah, there's the obvious. Kind of. There you go. 
but you talked a bunch when we moved around with that item. Makes you wonder if you're moving in through energy fields as you're walking. Is that a way to map out the energetic location that you're in? I mean, it's triggering through EMF or at least spirit fluctuation. Right. And as it goes through different fields, maybe? It's, it's spitting out words. They may not be relevant, but it may be demonstrating that we are walking through energetic fields as we're traveling. So, so we're back here in uh, another seating area and waiting to communicate with any spirits that might be near. If you're near, we have a flashlight on the table. With very little manipulation, you can turn that on and let us know you're here. I really wish I had that gift of sight, like some psychics had that could right. see. I really wish that was me. So I, it's amazing how I'm into all this, I'm a believer in all of it. Yet I've met so many people that message me and say, hey, I'm psychic, I'm a medium. And yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, I think there are a lot of. I guess she's here. Someone's here. Uh, oh, it just said something too. What did it say? L. L. Does, does your name start with an L? Can you turn the flashlight off? There it is. Okay. Wish so, I could see you, but thank you for letting us know you're here. So, can we confirm? Does your name start with the letter L? Can you turn on the flashlight again for us? Mr. Davenport, are you here with us right now? If so, can you turn the light back on for us and confirm it? I want to thank you for letting us into your beautiful hotel. Yes. And to share this experience. It's truly a gift to be here. It's a beautiful place. And I'm so amazed what you built. Getting back to the psychics thing, I think there's some bad, bad actors, a lot of bad actors in that, in that area. I think there are some extraordinarily gifted people, oh, yeah. but unfortunately they're more of the exception than the rule. Right. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that are putting, putting on that title, but I don't think that it's so whoever this is seems to enjoy the talk about the psychic stuff. That is Art, a dream. Do you have psychic abilities? If you're a psychic, can you turn the light off? Thank you very Thank much. you. It mm -hmm. seems like it kicked on every time we talk about the psychic. Yeah. I bet you there's been a lot of psychics rolling through here. Though. Oh yeah. As, sure. a, as a haunted hotel. Imagine that must get old. We were talking about Houdini earlier. Did you know he, he was here in Spokane? He, he jumped off one of the bridges for one of his trips. Oh, did he? I found it in the local paper. Very cool. Yeah, he was an amazing man. Yeah. Just think of, uh, of living a life so out loud that you leave a footstep through time. You know, I think that that's so incredible. Thank you. Mr. Davenport did you. He created this. Are you Lewis Davenport? Is that me who's lighting this? If so, please turn off the flashlight. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for the gift of your hotel to all of us. Mr. Davenport, are you pleased with what's become of your legacy here? Are you pleased with how your hotel is enjoyed and visited by so many? Or I guess that's a stupid question. <laughs> of course he'd be pleased, but yeah. I think it's amazing. What you've done is amazing. Mr. Davenport, is your wife with you right now? If so, can you please turn the flashlight off? On command. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Together. Didn't they live here together? Huh? His wife lived here with him as well? Yeah, she lived like 15 years after, oh. and she died in the same room. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I wonder how, when they closed it, it came close to being torn down, how I felt. That must have been 
self-esteem. Is that a sad time for you, Mr. Davenport? When your hotel, this jewel of a, of a place, was nearly destroyed? I was not still here. Okay. I can't imagine. It, this would have been such a tragic loss. Does it make you happy that your hotel is doing so well now? Yeah. Thank you. You should be very proud. It's kind of too bad he wasn't insured here somewhere, you know? Oh, yeah. No. You know, that would be That'd be really cool. cool. Yeah. Because I know, like, with, with churches, a lot of times the founding priests are, or ministers are buried on their church. That's right. the church they built. Well, this is kind of his church. His... His statement. Yeah. Oh, you, you think that's a good idea, huh? Yeah, they should have. Is this your crowning achievement, Mr. Davenport? Is this turned out how you wanted it, how you foresaw it? Thank you. I, I love that statue of him. He was so well regarded, they put his statue at the. <laughs> Right in the lobby, they're reading the book. And maybe that's what he did every day. Maybe that's why that statue's there, is because that commemorates he would maybe come down and read the paper every morning. Was that the case, Mr. Davenport? Did you come down every morning and read the paper in the lobby? Is that what that statue depicts? Is that is that activity you did regularly? No? Okay. Maybe it's just poetic. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I'm impatient. You have to forgive me. Did you like your, your office in the basement? <laughs> it seems you would have been right up here in the middle of it. Was that by design or was that just the only place you didn't, couldn't, you could get away from things? I don't know what I'm asking. I don't know how you're going to answer that. Sorry. I'm babbling. <laughs> If you did not like the circus, turn the light on. We've heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just did it for his friend. Did, did you decorate the room for your friend? Because I always got to wonder, I mean, I mean, for modern conveniences, I'm sure they had to update things. Oh, yeah. And, and rewiring and all that stuff. And so I suppose they updated things a bit. But I'm going to wonder if that did that take away from the beauty that was there. I don't know what we're indicating here. <laughs> Sorry. Can you turn the light off, please? <laughs> it just blue dots in my eyes and I'm, I'm absolutely amazed. I literally am. This is one of the most beautiful hotels I've ever seen in my life. And so some people don't get it. I mean, they walk in and they're unfazed by it. They don't understand. I hope I never get to that place in life where I wouldn't appreciate something like this. Here. Right. I hope I never get to that point where, I, you know, even if you've seen a million places still the craftsmanship, the work, the love, and the, and the, the, the intricate detail, painstaking details that were done just to make this amazing. If I ever don't see that, it's your day. Yeah. I will try to always see that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davenport. I think that spirits literally move with the blink of an eye. Like they're not they're not hauling meat around like we are, so we're we're like dealing with the physics of the world, but I think they could just be like boop, 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 because they are just energetic, is that correct? Are you able to move through the yeah? Okay. That is amazing. Being in a body is a lot of work. 
So it also makes me wonder, like, past, present, future, timelines, how all that is tied together. But I feel like, actually, the era of this hotel was, was you know, active. It's a very, uh, very familiar to me and today. Um, but, like, the 20s to me feels like it was a time, for some reason, that I really loved. I obviously wasn't here in this body then, so is that a memory of some piece of my past when I was? So I wonder, like, Mr. Davenport, is he aware of things like of YouTube of modern advances? I, I don't know. Would it be in this? Oh, maybe. <laughs> if you're aware of it, turn the light off. If you're aware of what YouTube is or all this multimedia stuff. Interesting. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, and the, the thing is, is that certainly the darkness gets a lot of press in our world. And, and even more so now than ever. And that's the sad part. Because it makes people despair. It makes people feel like you can't even fight. You know, but you can. Because I think the good is even stronger. It's just not getting the airtime that the, that the evil is. And that's the sad, tragic part. But I think the good is always stronger. I do too. Yeah. Do you? Very close. To continue investigating this area, Charles and I returned to the circus room and grabbed the structured light camera to bring to the lobby to see if we could yield any further evidence in the lobby area where we had the amazing flashlight test. We weren't alone. This further substantiates that we were getting activity because someone was hanging out with us. Right? Yes, indeed. Very powerful. Very powerful corroboration, and that's why we bring so many tools because this is now at least double verification of the activity we were having a mapped SLS camera picture image showing a figure in these wingback chairs, as well as the flashlight test that we did earlier right on that table, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very powerful. This is 3 a.m. after 3 a.m. In the lobby area. We've not seen the lady in white. But perhaps it's her night off. <laughs> we don't know if it gets scheduled or not. I wonder if I can go stand by at this place. Where are you now? Do I have to cross the yep. chair? It kind of looks like it's reaching out to you. That's awesome. Investigating the Davenport Hotel was nothing short of an honor. A lot of times when you think of a haunted hotel, you think about spooky denizens of some dire misfortunes that stick around and try to terrorize the living. But the Davenport was definitely not that place. Um, the Davenport was uh, a beautiful testament to a dream that a man had, and he worked his entire life to manifest and create. And this was a place that was celebrated in the community and in, in the nation 
as a, a wonderful place and was visited by so many dignitaries and celebrities of the time. And um, short of becoming a tragedy in itself in that it was essentially abandoned and facing demolition. However, in the 11th hour, it was, it was saved and, and eventually restored to its original splendor. And it stands now as a testament to that dream and that love and that, and that timeless quality that this place uh, represents. I, I loved the Davenport. There is activity there. There is spiritual activity, but these are not desolate, destitute spirits tormented and living in, in, in their own misery. These are the remnants of those who loved the place, loved this, this, this amazing dream, and celebrate it still. I didn't get the feeling, nor did Charles, of anything dark and horrible. We had the feeling that we were perhaps taking a journey through time, in a sense, not only in just being there in, his, in its original splendor, but that it's still celebrated and adored by those who lived there, who, who cared for the place, and who continue to look after it. So there was nothing scary and spooky going on. It was all just an incredible moment and beauty. And I, 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 really, I really enjoyed our time there. I look forward to returning to the Davenport at another time to continue this. But if you go to the Davenport Hotel in Spokane, just know you're not walking into a haunted hotel. You're walking into a doorway in time with the rare opportunity to interact with those who loved and continue to love this space. And so I can't recommend it enough. And I hope if you guys are in the neighborhood, you'll check it out. You won't be disappointed. Take care, everybody, and thank you so much for watching.